Hi folks, this is all the fruit. And since I managed to get my hands on some rare Pseudocydonia chinensis, I decided to make a comparison of all the fruits being called quince. At least all the fruits being called quince and being grown in temperate areas. All the fruits I'm aware of which are being called quince and being grown in temperate areas. I'm here in Heidelberg, Germany. Mid-October, you can see the leaves are starting to change color. And all those fruits were harvested by myself within a couple kilometers around this place. So there are other fruits in the tropics which are being called quince, but I forgot which ones. So those will be all the temperate quinces. Also in Germany, well, in most places there's a big confusion about quinces, but there is a big confusion about every fruit. I mean, most people, they just grow fruits or sell fruits. If they are tasty and if people buy them, those orchards here, if you send 10 specialists through those orchards, you'll get 50 opinions about the fruit varieties here. And with quinces, it's very complicated. The Germans, they like to have one specific pear variety, which is grafted upon a quince and gets a specific taste and this re its resilience from being grafted on a quince. And they often refer to this pear as a quince. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it today. I would have added it, despite the fact that it's definitely a pear. It's just being commonly grafted on a quince. So those are the fruits which are really being called quince with some justification. Here we have Sidonia oblonga, the quince of antiquity, the quince which was maybe the biblical apple, the quince which was maybe the apple of Paris, most probably the apple of Paris, like the guy who had to choose which goddess is the most beautiful and then uh, there was the Trojan War, the stuff with the horse and so. This was probably more prominent in antique, antique mythology, biblical as well as Greek mythology than the normal apple, but later our European Christians renamed everything to apple because it was more convenient for them. Why was this thing so popular in antique mythology? Well, in Mesopotamia, normal apples don't grow so well. The winters are not cold enough and the summers are too hot and too dry. So people rather grew quinces since antiquity. So this thing was very much present in all those old cultures which had uh, cities and writing and an official mythology for many thousands of years. And later, the Jews as well as the Greeks, they uh, spent some time in, uh, in the East, in Mesopotamia and surrounding areas, and this stuff became very important for their own culture and mythology and, of course, cuisine. So, our very favorite quince, Sidonia oblonga, the quince, of the antique Middle East, or the queens of classical Greece and Rome, and the queens of Europe for the last couple thousand years. In Germany, there are two groups of those queens varieties, the pear queens and the apple queens. This is this year and this year are the same species. So this is one, well, this is one apple queens I cut in half. This is one pear queens I cut in half, same species. The apple queens is grown in Germany for several reasons. It's very hard. But it's very aromatic, very rich in pectin, and very, well, and pretty tolerant to German mountain climate. It still wouldn't survive in northern Russia, but for Germany it's quite frost hardy. This bigger one here, the so-called pear quince, you can see where the names come from. This looks more like a pear, this looks more like an apple. And you can also see a shape which is very familiar from antique, medieval, and Middle Eastern art. This, the typical shape of this fruit. Well, the apple quince is probably much closer to the traditional, uh, to the wild, uh, old wild quinces. I've never seen a wild Sidonia oblonga. I really would like to see one. The pear quince, those are usually quite modern varieties, which are softer. They're easier to cut. Some of them can be eaten out of hand. You can make them into compots and preserves. Very good stuff, but the Germans still cultivate this as a sense of tradition and to use it for the pectin and for the flavor. You can do so much with quince. It's not eaten out of hand so much, but you can use it to make quince bread, quince cheese, sweet meats, fruit leather, jam, jelly, juice, liquor, hmm, syrup. I've made most of those from quinces. Wonderful fruit. 
Another fruit which is in the last decades or centuries become quite popular in Europe is the Japanese flowering queens. By the way, we had the most severe drought in recorded history in Europe this summer, so all the fruits are quite small. Those quinces, the pear quinces, they can get up to one kilogram. Even the apple quinces can get bigger. The flowering quinces can get the size of this Pseudocydonia. Pseudocydonia can also get bigger and especially longer. So all the fruits, in comparison to my fat and grubby hands, are about half the size of the maximum they can reach. So the Japanese flowering quince, it's not one species, it's a whole genus of a lot of different species. Xenomelas. There are several species. There are also a lot of hybrids and varieties. It's being used as an ornamental. Usually it's grown as a small shrub. That it has beautiful red or sometimes pink or... Okay, there is a... Uh, what is this military plane do doing above me? Well, it is being used a lot as a as an ornamental in more temperate areas of Europe because of the red flowers and the yellow fruits. But in northern areas like the Baltics, northern Russia, Scandinavia, this is the standard quince which is being used as a fruit for jams, jellies, juices and so on. Also in northern China and in North Korea this is an important fruit tree. It has a much more lemony smell and taste than the normal quince. Quinces are very aromatic. Basically, I haven't made any quince preserves for the last 10 years, but every year I put some in my bedroom and also in my kitchen for the nice smell. This has a much more sour, much more sour smell. Last, and well, if you go by the Western standards, last and maybe least is the Pseudocydonia sinensis, the Chinese quince. It's almost unknown in the West. I learned about this tree only two years ago and I've seen a total of three trees I can remember. While the other ones I've seen thousands. It comes from southeastern China and is also being used as a quince despite the fact that it's even harder and tougher than the other quinces. Now let's go to the important part after this very long introduction. I want to compare the smell and the taste of those different fruits which are called quinces and which are closely related. They are all in the rosaceae, they are all in the uh, subfamily Maloideae. They have all been lumped into one genus from, uh, at, from time to time. Those two are even now con sometimes considered part of one genus. And since they are all called quinces, you can imagine that the culinary properties are quite similar. Let's first see the smell. Hmm. The typical wonderful quince smell, which is like, yeah, it's an important part of autumn. You make quince preserves in a cold autumn day and all your house smells of quinces. Wonderful. This is, for a lot of people in Europe, the Mediterranean and the Middle East, this is a very important part of their culture. But it's also spread all over the world in tropical and no, in subtropical and temperate areas. Xenomeles, for us, a popular ornamental for people in the north. It's the quince they eat and prepare, and I've done a lot of stuff with it. It's a very versatile fruit. Just It's just sour and aromatic, so you usually need something mild. A lot of sugar and maybe cinnamon or stuff to a little bit counterbalance the sourness. Mmm... Another beautiful smell, very aromatic. I can't imagine why they call them quince, but the smell is definitely different. And especially in, in Chanomeles, there are so many different species and varieties and hybrids. It can vary a lot. Well, let's try the apple quince. Hmm. Not more aromatic than the pear quince in this uh, case. Hmm less aromatic. Yeah, definitely. The pear quince is more aromatic. However, okay, I found this on the ground and had to rip this from the tree. Maybe this is a bit more ripe. And then the Chinese quince, the Chinese pseudo quince, which has a very strange flavor. A musky flavor of impatiens balsamifera and of musk melons. 
So all three are called quinces. All three look very similar. All three are very aromatic, but the flavors, although all three flavors are great, they are also very different. This is Mm, this is for me the, the best one and even the most traditional one, but all three are good. I don't know if I would fill my my bedroom with this one. It's a little bit too, well, musky, too musk melony. I've put the other two in my bedroom in many, in many autumns. I still would say that this is the best. Now let's try and taste them. Hmm, maybe I should do some cooking with those things. But for now, let's taste them raw. First, the pear, or let's do it the other way around, because if this also has the best taste, I will be disappointed by all the successive ones. Let's first try the Pseudocydonia sinensis. I hope it's ripe. When I tear it off the tree, it came off without any violence, so I think it's reasonably, reasonably ripe. It tastes like a quince, maybe a bit more sour and less aromatic. Like most musk melons, the skin is more aromatic than the flesh. Yeah, the flesh still has the musk melon smell, but it's weaker. Now the apple quince. I know that in other countries they have different, um, different um, groups of varieties for the quince, but in Germany it's apple quince and pear quince, and this is definitely an apple quince. Mm. Sweeter, softer, and even a bit more aromatic. Mm. Apple quinces are usually not eaten out of hand, but yeah, even if this is an apple quince, I could actually eat it out of hand. Now the Sheromelis, I don't know which one it is, I just collected it from a park. I once were able to make a taste comparison of different Sheromelis species, hybrids and varieties in a botanic garden. Unfortunately, this was after the second worst drought in recorded history, just four years ago. You see a pattern here, it's called climate change. The worst catastrophes in recorded history follow one after the other. Now everything looks nice and green, but the summer was basically a Mediterranean summer around here. Well, Chanomeles, very big quality and taste difference between the different flowering quinces. Let's try this random one, which is probably some random ornamental variety. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very sour. With a delicate, yeah, it has a delicate sour flavor. And even, <laughs> and it even reminds me of cinnamon. And still, when you make liquors or other things with a lot of flowering quins, I've done a lot of liquors in my youth, and I realized that cinnamon, flowering quins was the only thing where you really needed a lot of cinnamon liquor to counteract the, the sourness and the one-sidedness of it and then you could make a wonderful very well balanced liquor with flowering quince and and um, uh, cinnamon well now last the big pear quince the one which smelled best and which also has most sentimental value for me this one we used to play a lot for those and nibble them in parks and gardens when I was a little kid in Bulgaria and later was a, when I was a bigger kid in Germany. So I've also known this since my youth. But still, this one was something different. This one was the smell and the taste of autumn. Hmm. Good. Quite soft and sweet. Mm-hmm. Definitely fit to be eaten out of hand. A bit tougher than a fully ripe apple. A bit more astringent than a fully ripe apple. Considerably less sweet than a fully ripe apple. But still, it's good. I still prefer warm quince tea. 
or wonderful uh, quince compote slices or quince jam. I've never made fruit leather or those drier quince preserves, but I've eaten them a lot and they are very good. So yeah, taste-wise, definitely this one is the winner. This one, which is from the same species, is the second one. This one is still quite good, this one, yeah. I know why it's not so popular here in the West. In the East, it's being used a lot as, an, as a medicinal plant. I wonder why it's so popular in East Asia. Maybe there are better varieties, so maybe it, it ripens later than the other ones. I'll keep a tag on this one, and I'll try to visit the tree again in a couple weeks and try them when they're fully ripe, but I had to pick them now because some storm could... Some storm could um, throw them down and they, they could be thrown away. So I had to pick them now. And also those will not stay fresh forever. So very interesting comparison. I would still say, yeah, the traditional quince I'm being used to in Bulgaria. We, I never saw apple quinces. We just have pear quinces there. Still the best. But the other ones also have their place in culinary stuff. They're all interchangeable. For everything you can use one of them, you can also use the other ones. But still, I would say nothing beats this one. That's why those are called pseudo queens, and also this one is also called pseudo queens because, yeah, they are copies of the original, but they still cannot reach the same level. So, folks, those were all the quinces I know of. If you know other quinces or other fruits which are being called queens, please tell me. I would really love to try them. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the autumn-like city of Heidelberg. It's actually fruit season, but after years of severe drought, not so many fruits around here. And if you want to not to miss any more of my videos, you not only need to subscribe to my channel, but you also need to press the little bell icon.